Hello and welcome to my journey to group Iron Man. In this journey I will be playing duos with a good friend of mine. And these videos don't opt to be very optimal, but more for entertaining purpose and a guide for newer players and returning players like myself. Or like Bill here, who has three kids and has less time to play. And sometimes belts his wife because she doesn't let him play. And now he lives on the street and got kicked out of his house because of domestic violence. Please. Don't be like Bill. On this run, I set some goals for myself, which I want to succeed. These are fairly easy to begin with. Get all free to play quests done. Get the best in slot gear for magic, ranged and melee. And get around skill level 50 for each skill. I know what you want to say. You goddamn casual. These are very easy tasks for the vast majority of people in old school RuneScape. But this is just the beginning. So I can see if people really like this type of content. And even like me playing RuneScape to begin with. So let me know if you want to see more of this in the future. And also if I like to play this game. Editing pedals from the future. I do. I'm goddamn addicted to this game. Be sure to check out Twitch. It's in the description. Now let's start from the beginning, because I've been talking for way too long. We just finished up Tutorial Iceland and head up upstairs to the bank on Castle Lumbridge. I hope to make this a free to play start from the beginning. So if you play free to play as well, this will be a great guidance for you as well. Please don't be a damn fool like me I pick up the locks on the top of the roof here. And try to make them for fletching or even for fire making methods. Because that's for memory related stuff and you don't need that. Just be a smart boy and start doing the quest around here first. Start with Cook's Assistant, Restless Ghost, X marks the spot. And also Sheep Shearer. Sheep Shearer. 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 Sheep Shearer. God damn it. <laughs> These couple of first quests are very self explanatory. Now you get a pot and a bucket from Tutorial Island. Pick up an egg with... The sheep shearer quest. Pick up some grain on the other side. And then go to the mill. Grind up the grain. Then at the bottom there will be flour. Which you can put in the pot. Then go up to a dairy cow. Which you can milk. Put it into the bucket. And then you have an egg. A bucket of milk. And a pot of flour. And then you can complete the first quest. Hey. Now head over back to the sheep. Pick up a shear in the house. Shear the sheep. Then head over to Castle Lumbridge. On the first floor there will be a spinning wheel. Spin your wool into balls of wool and then finish up your second quest. Uh. Now for Restless Ghost, walk your way all the way across Lumbridge Swamp. This man will give you a ghost amulet. Head back to the ghost, talk to the ghost. Ooh, spooky ghost! Now if you want to you can already start Rune Mysteries which is also located in the Lumbridge Castle. Then after that buy yourself a spade, which you can get in the general store. Walk to the front of the castle of Lumbridge and dig here. Then you get a little map, walk to the back side of the castle and dig here. Then make your way over to Draenor village and dig here. And then make your way across Draenor village and dig here in between the pig. Then walk over to Port Rim and talk to Veos. And that will be it for X marks the spot. Now if that's done, walk your way back over to Draenor village. Head over to the Mage Tower. Now if you accepted Rune Mysteries already, talk to this guy. So you don't have to walk back again. And walk over to this altar. Which gives you a skull which you need to complete the Restless Ghost. Head over back to Lumbridge. And that will be it. And you finished your first four quests. Now very quick side note. Be sure to kill one of these highwaymen. Because they drop the black cape. Which gives you some little extra bonus for defense. Now you can be a real manly chat now and be real ballsy and go to the end of the wilderness. Collect steel leggings and chest plate. Now that you have invested almost no time in your character still. But of course, if you play hardcore, you will lose your hardcore status. You can be just doing this non-stop. Make a new character and if you die, you'll do it again and do it again. And until you end up with actually doing it and having a fuck ton of cash at the beginning. Hello! I like money. Or you can just simply continue on doing quests. Or you can take absolute zero risk at all and be a little bitch baby like me and go for an extremely safe money making method. I went for making unstrung symbols. Now, I never tried this before, but I wanted to try something new. In order to make these symbols, you need 16 crafting, 20 mining and 20 blacksmithing. Now, the great side about this is you can level many skills at the same time by doing this. And it gets us to the early levels and make some money at the same time. Now let's start with crafting. 
So my game plan was to kill cows for their cowhide and level my ranged at the same time. I wanted to level ranged and magic in order to use it for later on. For safe spotting, runes are very expensive at the start and you can boost your magic up to 10 by doing imp catcher and witch potion, which you can't with range because there's zero XP rewards for doing any free to play quest. So I opted to go with the ranged route instead. And to be honest, the early levels just fucking suck. You start with 25 arrows and a short bow, but you can also get another 25 training arrows and a training bow from the ranged combat shooter. You can collect 25 of these every 30 minutes and they're completely free. But in order to do so, you need to have zero left of them and also zero in the bank or else she wouldn't give you another 25 arrows. Little side note, the training arrows can only be fired with the training bow, so you know. Now why did I go for cows? Simple. Pick up everything you see from the cow. Bury the bones for prayer experience. Store your cow hides in the bank on top of Castle Limbridge. And you need about 200 of these. Cook their meat in the furnace by the cook's assistant quest. You could stop cooking the meat at level 10 if you want to. So you can collect more cow hides. This is required for red berry pie which you need for later on. When you have a nice stack of cow hides you can go across the gate to El Karit for 10 GP. There will be a man named Alice running a tanner store and he can transfer your cow hides over to leather for 1 GP each. In order to use these letters, you will need a needle and a thread which you can buy at Dominic's crafting store which is located across town. Now when you're there, please don't forget to buy holy mold because you need that for later on. Start leveling your crafting by making leather gloves, then boots, then cowls, then vembrace, then leather bodies and at last leather chaps. If you're smart, save one of each and you can use this for your ranged armor. Now for selling these items, I only sell like 3 or 5 at the same time and then just world hop to another server. This way the price don't decrease too much and you don't lose too much money. This is mainly due the more you sell an item and it stacks up in the shop, it gives you less money and it decreases in value. We're going to use this method for everything. And there you have it, you made a little bit of money and now your 16 crafting is done. Leveled the early levels of ranged and also collected some food and increased your cooking skill. And also increased your prayer skill. Four birds with one stone. Hello. Hi. Next on the list we have mining. It's kind of boring but I just leveled till 15 mining at the Varrock Southeast Mining Camp. Just getting the same amounts of tin as copper, that way we can later on use this for smelting bronze bars. While you're here, be sure to collect some red berries, maybe around 10, and a cadaver berry. The red berries are needed for the quest like Knight Sword or Prince Ali Rescue, and Goblin Diplomacy and the cadaver berries are for Romeo and Juliet. At 15 mining, you can mine iron, which you need in order to complete Doric's quest. This gives you an easy 1300 mining XP. Collect 6 clay, 2 iron and 4 copper and make your way over to the north of Valador where there's a little house and talk to Doric. Give him the supplies, easy money, there's your 19 mining. You could mine some more iron after this until you're level 20 and you're done with that. And that's mining. Now hopping over to blacksmithing. Now that you are still in Felador, be sure to accept the Knight Sword quest, which is an amazing quest that gives you 13k blacksmithing experience. That's level 1 till 29 in an instant, which is awesome. Oh my god! Wow! This is by the way located in the White Knight's castle in Felador and talk to the squire there. But first, we need 15 smithing. You can go over to the Edgeville Furnace and smelt all your ores which you have collected before and turn them into bronze bars. This is the fastest place to smelt because the bank and the furnace are really close to each other. Now head on over to Varrock, get out your hammer and slap out all these bronze bars and into the best items you can make for your level. This is also a great place because the bank and the anvil are really close to each other. We need 15 smithing in order to smelt iron because we need 2 iron bars for the Knight Sword quest. So a really quick guide to the Knight Sword quest. So pause if you need to. Head on over to Raldo and talk to him about the Inkendo Dwarf. Make a red berry pie and head on over to Turgo the Dwarf. Give him the pie and head back to the Squire and Felador and get the picture of the sword. Upstairs in Sir Vim's room, open and search the cupboard, obtain the portrait. Now before you head back over to the Dwarf, be sure to collect the two iron bars and get some food for healing, cause mobs will be attacking you here and you'll also need the pickaxe to mine the Blurite. Head on over back to Turgo the Dwarf, give him the portrait, 
and then go inside the Asgarnia ice cave. You need to walk past the level 57 ice warriors and also a level 53 ice giant. Walk past everything and then collect your blue right ore. You have collected the blue right ore and now you can head over back to Turgo the dwarf. He can make you the blur right sword and you can hand it in in Velador at the squire. This completes the knight sword quest and now you have 32 blacksmithing. And this finishes blacksmithing up as well. We finally got to the point of making these damn symbols. While still in Valador, you can get yourself a better pickaxe in the Valador mines or the dwarven mines. There's a dwarf named Nurmoth. Hello there. He sells you every pickaxe until rune. If you don't have the attack requirements to wear this pickaxe, it's not a problem. You can just hold it in your inventory and you can still mine. It still works. Now after this I went over to Varrock southwest mining site and there are three silver deposits. But silver takes quite a time to respawn, so you can just world hop to another world and mine those three silver ores again and then go on and go on. By doing this method you can collect way more silver and then if you've got a full inventory just head on over to bank and redo the progress. After this I went to the Edgeville furnace and smelted my ores into bars. These silver bars can be melted into the unstrong symbols. But in order to do so you need your holy mold. And this is why you bought the holy mold before. So you don't have to walk back to Alcarit. I sold these unstrong symbols 5 at a time at a general store. And I did the same method like we did before. World hop again and then sell 5 more. So the price doesn't decrease too much. And make some profit out of it. And if you do this method for in an hour or so, you can make around 12k an hour. Which is pretty nice when our account is just this low of a level. And we just started out. This was an extremely beginner friendly video. To start up the series. So I hope I could help new people and returning players with a fully fledged out beginner's guide. Of course, everybody can do whatever they want. And maybe dislike my approach, it's totally understandable. The next videos of these series... We will step up the pace by a lot and we will make some real progress. I hope you all enjoyed it. This video took me quite a while, but I hope to see you all in the next one. Like and subscribe. Peace.